Several years ago, probably like many of you, uh, I was bombarded by Glowforge ads on YouTube. And at the time, I wasn't sure why, but I just knew that I had to have a laser cutter. Uh, those ads are super intriguing. Um, so uh, at the time, I did a lot of research because uh, I felt like it was pretty expensive and I wanted to see what options were out there. Uh, I ended up instead buying this 100 watt CO2 laser off of eBay. Um, there's, a, there's a bunch of different sellers, but this one in particular was uh, China CNC zone zone and uh, I believe they import them from China and then sell them out of a, a, a warehouse in New Jersey so I am in no way affiliated with this company or have any type of sponsorship I bought this laser on my own um, unlike all of the Glowforge ads you see that uh, the video creator gets a kickback when you buy one um, I just wanted to make this video to um, let people know my experience with this alternative um, so you can make an educated decision. I've never actually used a Glowforge. I just saw one working once at a science convention. Um, but here on papers is how these two machines stack up. And, and what I was really uh, considering was that uh, the price is very similar. Um, the eBay laser, you get a way more powerful laser tube, 100 watt versus a 40 watt. The, the cutting area is much larger. You can see I made a little representation of this laser. You can fit three times the size of the bed of the Glowforge, which, which is substantial. And also you have a, a greater cutting height if you want to engrave a, a thick object. Uh, I don't know exactly how the fast the Glowforge is because they don't put that information out anywhere. Um, I know uh, my machine, I run it with Lightburn, which is, uh, is a pretty good software as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I've heard complaints of Glowforge users that uh, their software requires Wi-Fi connection. So, uh, you know, if they don't have internet, they can't use their cutter. Um, I know the only other couple things that Glowforge might have going for it is that there seems to be a large community online around it for support. Uh, probably because of their incredible marketing campaign and their referral program. Um, also, uh, I see that it has a camera for aligning your workpiece. Um, that could be useful. Um, my laser has uh, just a diode laser for orientation, which has always worked fine for me. Here's just a couple photos of, of how the laser arrived to my house in this large crate. I had to pay, I think, an extra 150 bucks for a lift gate service so they would bring it into my garage. Here's me running the laser for the first time. Um, there were a couple preloaded test files on the laser, so there was this one of this Hello Kitty. Uh, so I just went ahead and cut that out on a scrap piece of wood. Show we didn't 
must use that file as a test cut because included with the laser was this Hello Kitty cut out of acrylic. I installed a, a milliamp meter on my machine so I could see what the actual laser output was. Um, that way I could run the, the laser in a, a safe operating range um, because the, the software it just tells you percentages but not actually how many milliamps it is. Uh, so here I made a little chart of what my safe range was. From my experience, um, cutting out half inch MDF or plywood would be the max thickness for this laser tube um, in a single pass. I did try cutting out three quarter inch and um, you could see the burn at the bottom but it didn't quite go all the way through. So let me show you a few different items that I used the laser to cut out. Uh, they all revolve around uh, this project, uh, the faster footwork trainer for, for badminton training that I that I've been working on. I plan on to put out a YouTube uh, video series about it in the future on how I use 3D printers, uh, CNC machines, and the laser cutter to, to build this guy. I designed the footwork trainer to use uh, eighth inch MDF panels for the front and, and the back of the machine. Um, I apply a material called Aura Mask over the MDF before I cut it and it helps keep off some of the smoke residue uh, while it cuts and then I use uh, an X-Acto knife to peel it off when it's all done. And it leaves a nice clean look. You can see how the front and back panels fit together with the 3D printed part. Um, they're pretty much a snap fit, but I also add a little glue. I also use the laser to cut out the packaging for the footwork trainer. Um, I make a, basically a box out of a black paper and then I use um, a craft paper to make a sleeve. Here's the finished box and the sleeve and how it all fits together. Lastly, I used the machine to make cardboard shipping boxes. Um, I designed up a, a box to fit between one and five of the devices, and then I can just cut out the box that I need um, when I'm ready to ship. My current house happens to have a doggy door on this exterior door, so uh, it makes the perfect little spot to run my exhaust out of. When starting a job, I always check to make sure that the exhaust fan is on and my water chiller is running. The laser goes through a homing sequence uh, whenever you start it up. Load up the file. And turn on the air compressor.
the laser scores the lines where I need to fold up the box and then I just hot glue it together. After having this machine for a couple years, uh, I don't regret it one bit. Um, I feel like I got a much more capable machine for the same price as a Glowforge. Um, I guess the biggest trade-off would be that um, I've had to deal with a couple issues on my own where uh, with the Glowforge I probably would have had some support uh, online for those. So let me, let me tell you about my experience. First, um, the eBay seller, um, I thought they were great. You know, at the time when I bought it, they're their CW5000 chiller was on back ordered and so they sent me a CW3000 for the meantime and then a couple weeks later they sent me the 5000 also and just let me keep the extra chiller so you know I ended up using that on my CNC machine which was great. I've really been happy with the Ruida controller uh, with Lightburn. I really had no issues and really it's all been self-explanatory. Um, also, the machine has an autofocus feature, which I really like. It, at the push of a button, it can set its height. Um, for the things that I would change about this machine, uh, first, the exhaust fan that's on it is pretty wimpy. I had an, uh, an external inline fan as well to help get the smoke out of there. Um, also, the, the door it could use some kind of seal on it because even though I'm exhausting the smoke out of there, it still will stink up the room a little bit. Uh, also, it comes with an aquarium pump for the air assist, which is really inadequate. It's about enough air to just keep the smoke off the laser lens. Other than that, um, you know, I've replaced it with an uh, actual air compressor so I can actually um, use the air to help cut cleaner and deeper. Um, I had one problem that I noticed whenever I would open the door, um, it would power off the whole machine. Um, there's a safety switch there, which is great, but um, I realized it was wired wrong. So uh, I rewired it, and now whenever I open the door, it just will pause the machine, let me do what I need to do. When I close it, it will continue, uh, which is how it was supposed to operate. Um, so I'm not sure what happened there at the factory. Also, one other thing, I really, for the life of me, can't figure out what's going on. Um, whenever I do like a test cut in either the X or Y axis, just a straight cut. The X axis has uh, a linear rail that it rides on and it's a very clean line. However, the Y axis has like a round linear rail and I noticed like the slightest bit of a little jitter in the line. I thought maybe it was caused by like a bad bearing or um, something was loose, but um, I, for the life of me, couldn't figure out what was causing it. I even went so far as to add uh, my own linear rail on the y-axis to help constrain that movement and see if it would fix it. And it did seem to minimize it just a hair, but it's still just slightly there. Um, you know, it's so subtle that a lot of people would probably not even notice it. I was just um, really nitpicking about it. Um, you would probably never actually know it's there unless you were really studying the cuts. But anyways, I, I thought I would mention it. Um, so, yeah, you know, here's my experience with this machine. Hopefully, if you're considering some kind of Glowforge alternative, that this will be useful to you. All right, thanks. Bye.